Hello coders, in the last video we did a conceptual discussion on how we're going to pull this page transitioning system off. Now in this tutorial I'm going to have a more practical discussion with you guys and we're actually going to jump into some of the code and uh, figure out exactly how we're going to do this. Alright, if you remember we have three main systems that the page transition system is comprised of. We have the menu controller, the transition, um, and the dynamic listener. Okay. Now in this tutorial we're going to focus only on the menu controller. We're going to finish that one up and then in the next tutorial we're going to jump into the transition component. Alright, so let's go ahead and look at the menu controller here. As always, you want to make sure that you have your uh, the correct using statements. Um, you shouldn't have to do anything for this one though. Alright, so as we talked about before and I outlined in the last tutorial, we're going to have two main arrays. Alright, we're going to have the game object array called pages, which is going to be the literal page prefabs um, that are going to be ma making up our menus. And then we have a string array called page names. These are going to be like the page codes for each of the corresponding pages. Now one thing to note is that the page names need to be in the same order as the pages array. Alright, so if main, if your main page is the first item in this array, then your the the first item in the page names array should be main okay so on and so forth with achievements or lore or whatever you have um, or whatever you're calling your 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 page prefabs they need to correspond to this string array exactly alright and then we're gonna have a game object current page again we need this uh, reference to our current page because we we want the menu controller to have control over when the current pages start transition or whenever the current page's transition is going to start and so he's going to have control over that and then I have this bullying for enter screen we're not going to be really using this in this tutorial series however I thought I would add it to this tutorial to show you guys if you're making a pause menu with this system um, and you want to know how you're going to get your pause menu to enter the screen you might want to do something like this where you have the boolean in your menu controller and whenever you press a button from um, if you're checking for input from another script then you can access the menu controller and set enter screen to true and then do something with that information alright um, now in our start event function I say set current page pages at the zero index so we're gonna set uh, the current page to be the first page in our pages array now set current page is only gonna be a method that's used to set the uh, first page in the menu after that we're not gonna be using it so what we do in this is we uh, create a new game object reference to our page prefab all right um, and the page is right here what we set to uh, the, what we pass through the parameter so we say instantiate page as game object so now we have our game object reference we say p.transform.setParent transform the reason we do this is because we want to make sure the, the um, we want to make sure that the page that's coming into the screen is a child of the canvas if it's not a child of the canvas it won't be seen then we get rec transform and transition references. Remember that each page is going to have a transition component on it. And of course, each page is going to have a rec transform component on it. And we're going to be using these to modify the position of our page. And we're also going to be using the transition component um, to deal with our initial spawn position. Okay, so what we're going to say is RT, our rec transform dot offset max equals new vector two t dot spawn position dot x comma t dot spawn position dot y alright so what I'm doing here is I'm actually setting the position the initial position using spawn position from the transition component which we're gonna be uh, talking about in the next tutorial alright and the reason we use offset max and offset min is simply because of the way uh, we're gonna be setting up our pages so let me go ahead and run the game here and we can look over here in my menu I have this page called first and notice my um, notice how I set my anchors. I have them set to stretch so that it's always going to fill the contents of my screen, uh, regardless of whatever screen resolution I'm using. So what I do is I say Alt Shift and then I click this bottom right square down here, and that's going to stretch my page um, so that it always fits the content of my screen. Now, the reason you aren't seeing any real stretching is because my image component is preserving the aspect. If I don't preserve the aspect, you can see that the image uh, goes and it continues until it reaches the anchors. Okay, so I'm going to keep preserving preserving the aspect here. Now, what I was mentioning before is the offset min is going to be, and the offset max is going to be the distance of the page 
from the anchors. So you can see the anchors we have. Um, you can see we have one of the anchors up here on the top left, and we have another anchor down here on the bottom right. And so our offset uh, vectors are going to um, determine how much space is between the the anchor and the page. So what we do is we use um, what we do is we use the offset min and offset max to actually move the page, and I and I move it based on this variable that we're going to create in the next tutorial called spawn position. Then what I do is I set the current page, or I'm sorry, what I do is I set the transform.local scale to vector 3.1. Um, now for some reason I can't really figure out why, but whenever you load in the page as a prefab and you don't set the scale to 1, then you get a, um, you, your, your page gets rescaled. Um, it must have something to do with the screen resolution, but anyway, if you write this line of code, you're going to be able to maintain that scale um, to what you want it to be. All right, and then I set current page equal to P. Okay, so remember we have to set the current page, and so whenever we first start the program, we're going to make sure that we have that current page set equal to our first page. All right, so then we jump on down to the set next page method, which has been talked so much about. Uh, remember, this is the method that it gets called whenever we press a button. Um, and when we press the button, we're going to be passing a page code to, as a parameter to that method, uh, set next page. Now what we do is we loop through the page names array that we created above, and then we say if the page code is equal to the page name that we're looking at, then we're going to reveal that page in the UI. Okay, so I'll repeat that again. Remember we have this array up here for page names, and it's going to be corresponding to this array for pages. And what we do is we loop through our page names and we check to see if the page code, which is the parameter that's passed, we say if the page code is equal to page names, then we're going to reveal that page in the UI. And what we're passing here is the index. And you'll see why in just a moment. Now the last method in this system is reveal page and UI. This is going to be what actually spawns the transition page um, and activates the transition and does all of that stuff. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new transition T we're going to set it equal to current page get component transition and then we're going to say t.start transition so we're going to start the transition right there then we're going to say current page equals t so right here we're setting a new current page we're going to say t.initialize transition page and what we're doing in this uh, in this method we're going to talk about in the next tutorial this method is going to spawn the new transition page and is going to return that transition page back to us so when i say current page equals this we're actually spawning the transition page and we're setting it, setting it equal to the new current page. And what we're passing is the uh, the object. So this initialized transition page is going to be accepting a game object. It's going to be pages at this index. Remember, we're actually passing index as an argument. And if you look up here when we say reveal page in UI and we pass I, it's going to be that index in the pages array. So again, it's the pages, whatever pages, uh, whatever index we are in the pages array is going to be the same index that we're spawning in the um, in this pages array right here. So after we spawn that, we can get the rec transform of the current page, the new current page, and then we're going to say t, which is our transition, is equal to current page dot get component transition. And from there, we can say um, Set the set the spawn position using these two lines of code, and I explained what these did um, a moment ago. All right, and that's going to conclude this short tutorial on setting up the menu controller. And the next tutorial, we're going to start talking about how to set up the transition uh, the, the transition component. All right, so that's going to conclude this tutorial. If you liked it, go ahead and drop a like. Uh, but as always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.